there's this trend on YouTube and the internet that says that you do not need an education to be successful in life. First, I want to point out that dropping out of school doesn't mean that you weren't smart. It doesn't mean that you didn't get an education. It just means you didn't get your education in that higher education place. Second, some of these people that we're holding up as not having an education are extremely disciplined and driven to succeed in the world in which they did succeed. Success in anything is determined by defining the outcome you're trying to achieve and then achieving it. And as simple as that sounds, when it comes to weight loss, many of us have a very difficult time achieving that goal. Many of us get information from the internet. And I'm by no means saying that information on the internet is of poor quality. I'm providing information on the internet right now. What I'm actually asking every wellness warrior to do is verify if the information that you're collecting on the internet is good quality information. So does the information make sense? And one of the ways that we can do that is by verifying the information, sort of like getting a second opinion. I check my information against another source that I also feel is credible and I see, is it matching somehow? We can also read, listen to, and watch people who acknowledge when they don't know the answer or acknowledge when they're not sure about what direction to go. Basically, that they let you know when the information they are presenting might not be fully complete and accurate. Then we can trust them more because they're letting us know, I don't have all the answers. And of course, paying attention to people who encourage you to challenge and ask more questions when things don't add up. This brings me to why I'm making today's video. I found an article on the internet that was recounting the story of a woman, and I want to get this right, who had success on her keto diet, but became obsessed with food and lost control of her life. And my initial thoughts was, well, she had to have gotten her information from a poor source. Of course, I'm biased. I believe that keto is a very healthy way to live your life. And I do not see any ways in which keto causes people to have problems with food. I'm acknowledging that right off the bat. So this is what I read. I started the keto diet in 2018. And within a year, I was able to lose over 120 pounds. Sounds good so far. Although the diet clearly worked, it made me obsessed with tracking calories and carbs. A little confused. I ended up over restricting and binge eating, and I was blind to any science that didn't back keto. This was the part that made me think, oh, she must have gotten poor quality information from somewhere because she's talking about tracking calories. I have to admit, that looking at her images, Wellness Warriors, I felt for her because I saw a woman who might not have thought that she would ever accomplish this goal. She lost a significant amount, 120 pounds. And here it was that she achieves the goal in a year, but yet feels the horror of having given up her mental health to achieving this goal. I know it's not worth it, right? My mental health is everything. It's not worth it. I felt so bad for her. But then as I read on, the information's not adding up. She says, I got obsessed about reading nutrition labels. When trying to lose weight, it's important to stay in a caloric deficit. And then they define it. Calories consumed is less than calories burned. Okay, fine. I still track my calories daily, but it's easy to take it too far. I got to the point where I'd get anxiety if I ate a few too many calories, even if the food was healthy. Okay, my problem right now, Wellness Warriors, is that that's nothing to do with keto. They just described your standard diet. I'm not sure I understand why they're talking about the standard diet when the title of the article is I lost 100 pounds on the keto diet, but it totally destroyed my relationship with food. If I'm doing a standard diet, why are we saying that? So I was confused. 
But of course, I kept reading because I wanted to understand why are, why are we even talking about this? So now, she, now the person goes on to say, if I went over my 20 grams of net carb, it ruined my day. Oh, so wait, we're do okay. Most low carb, high fat ketogenic diets recommend not exceeding 20 grams of net carb. That leaves a very little room for much anything else besides a few servings of low carb vegetables. You certainly can't have potatoes, rice, bread, pasta. Okay, whenever I exceed this number, I felt like a failure just because I'd eaten whole wheat toast or a banana. Okay, so again, I'm so confused because it sounds to me that what we're really learning is that this person is trying to do two diets at the same time, a standard calorie deficit diet and a low carb ketogenic diet. First, I, I, I need to take a moment to point out that Although this person is able to name the things that they should not be eating on keto, their actions indicate that they have poor information about what it is to live a ketogenic lifestyle because their focus, first and foremost, was on making sure that we understood that they were trying to keep their calorie count low. That has nothing to do with living a ketogenic lifestyle. But second of all, they go on to talk about the foods that they were eventually eating in so let, let's move forward a little bit. I had more binge eating episodes than I did before keto. Because the ketogenic diet is so restrictive, I would do really well for a while and then inevitably binge when I couldn't handle it anymore. Instead of indulging in a small baked potato, I'd have a large French fry. This might not be an issue for people who hadn't had problems with binge eating, but knowing I can't have something only makes it more alluring to me. Now, the frustration that I'm having right now is multiple. First, pointing out that this person, I, I feel like the person that wrote this, this article didn't expect us to read the whole article. I feel like the person or, or felt like we would read the article, but we wouldn't read it with an eye towards, is it true or false? We would just read it as information that has to be true. First, we present two different diets that the person is doing at the same time, as if that's going to have zero impact on their ability to be successful. Second, we're going to present as if doing keto involves anything to do with calories. Third, we're going to present that this person is saying that if they would have been doing keto appropriately, what they should have done was have the small baked potato. Even a small baked potato is likely to put you over your 20 grams, which tells me that whoever wrote the article didn't even verify what would be something the person could eat that would allow them to have a meal that would have been within the numbers they were supposed to have. So then Wellness Warriors, it makes it seem to me that this article isn't an article about helping us to see that sometimes people do keto and it pushes them in the wrong direction because actually keto isn't what put this person in the wrong direction. And we know that because the person actually says, I was already binging before I started keto. They go on to say in the last paragraph here, this might not be an issue for people who haven't had problems with binge eating, but for me it was. So then did keto cause me to have a poor relationship with food? To her own admission, the answer to that is no. She already had a poor relationship with food why would somebody write this article and, lab and, and label it that way? Blaming keto for something that the person in the article is already saying, no, I already had this problem. Did keto even amplify this person's problem? No. Trying to do a low calorie and keto diet at the same time without knowing what foods I'm able to eat, what foods I'm not able to eat, without knowing anything that would make their healthy ketogenic lifestyle healthy is what caused them to struggle with their diet. I, I, would I be able to blame low calorie diets for me not being able to manage my health if the only thing I was eating were chips and chocolate bars and ice cream? But I'm trying to do that in low calorie form? No, of course I'm going to fail. The worst part about this is that the images that they show show a person who actually lost the weight. Now, maybe this person did lose weight doing this lifestyle. I'm sure that had to have been difficult. And it explains why they had so much trouble because they weren't actually doing either keto nor low calorie for what I can see in this because if I'm still binge eating, I'm not doing low calorie either, right? Because every 
other day or however often I'm binging, I'm eating an extremely large amount of calories. Of course, when you continue to read on in the article, there's more information telling you why keto is going to ruin your health, why keto is not sustainable, etc., etc. And eventually it becomes very apparent. This article is not about someone who tried to do keto correctly and ended up in a bad situation. It's about someone who possibly did keto inappropriately and the author decided to capitalize on that information because they wanted to write an article about how bad keto is. Or it's about someone who just made up a story about losing weight on keto because they wanted to show that keto was bad and they gave this information and because they don't really understand keto, it's information that doesn't make any sense. But at the end of the day, it's an article with information that makes no sense to anyone who's ever done a ketogenic lifestyle. That's, that's not how you do keto. And that's not how, so let's talk about something else. In order to understand how to do something, I need to actually understand the information, which means I need to go to a quality source and find out how to do it. Everything about this article says that this person did not go to a quality source and understand how to do this. Now, I said this a bunch of times. If I'm eating 300, 350 grams of carb, and I take my carb count down to even a hundred where I'm not doing keto, I will still lose the weight. Why? Because I've taken 200 grams of carbs out of my diet. I'm in a low carb scenario. I'm not in a keto scenario. I'm in a low carb scenario, but that is a place where I can still eat potatoes and pasta and, and all those things occasionally because I'm only doing low carb. I will lose some weight. Will it be easy? nowhere near as easy and sustainable especially if i'm coming down 120 pounds to be able to sustain that long term if i'm still allowing these fun foods in my life i'm gonna have a hard time which is exactly what this person describes but pointing it out that's not keto if you add to that then i'm already a person who restricts and then overeats and then restricts and then overeats i'm still living this lifestyle that got me in trouble in the first place. I'm still engaging with foods in a way that got me in trouble in the first place. So therefore, I'm still going to have a hard time maintaining this healthy way of eating far into the future. If I want to have success, I need to define what that success is going to look like. And it's not just a number on a scale. It's about how will Violet feed herself. It's about how will Violet eat when she goes out with other people. It's about how will Violet decide what is healthy and what isn't healthy? Where am I getting that information from? It's about understanding what does it mean to eat 20 grams of carbs or less. It's about understanding how many carbs are in what food. It's about understanding what do carbohydrates actually do to the body. It's about understanding why are hormones important. There's so much more. So we go back to this idea as can anybody in the world just be successful without an education? The answer is actually no. Even for something like losing weight, there's so much information I need to understand in order for me to do a diet appropriately and to maintain that healthy way of eating far into the future because I understand what my body is trying to accomplish and I understand what the food I'm eating, how that will impact what my body is trying to accomplish. If I start that whole process with beliefs about food that are simply not true, because why can't I simply eat chips? Why is that a big deal? If I don't know why that's a big deal, if I don't know why lollipops are unhealthy to eat, if I don't understand, not just know that they're not healthy to eat, why are they unhealthy to eat? If I don't understand this information, and if I come into this with a poor relationship with food and I don't address that relationship that I have with food, then that relationship that I have with food is going to mess with everything else that I'm trying to accomplish. Because if I eat ice cream to help my heart feel happy, but I'm supposed to be putting ice cream down, what happens every time my heart is sad? How do I make myself feel better? And if I don't have an answer to that, a real answer, a true answer, a real world answer, I'm going to eat the ice cream. Wellness Warriors, I need to point out that whether or not food is healthy in the body is actually determined by what the body does with that food and how that food impacts the body. It's not determined by a classification that some human gives it. So just because 
a company decides to write healthy on a processed food like cereal, like protein bars, like replacement meal shakes, doesn't mean that that is actually a healthy food. What determines whether or not something is healthy is how my body reacts to it once I've ingested it. Before I can learn something new, I need to actually be in a position to understand it. If I'm already struggling in my relationship with food, doing a new diet is not going to help me because that struggle that I'm having will translate into this new diet that I'm doing. I need to solve the violet part, so my, the, the what I believe part, before I can allow a diet to help me. And I need to see those two things as separate. Can I work on them at the same time? Yes. But if I'm not working on my relationship with food and I'm only focusing on eat this, eat that, do this, do that, I will fail at my goal for myself. There's a video on the screen right there that's going to help you to understand why calorie counting is actually going to keep you fat. Wellness Warriors, I'm always so happy when you come back and everybody who's new, subscribe and ring that bell so that you can get on the road to health. I love making these videos for you guys and I really can't wait to talk to you again next week.